Hi, this is Josh with Wholesale Solar. I'm here today to tell you a little bit about solar edge store edge inverters and how they're used with the LG Chem battery. Now I've put together a mock-up here that's got all of the equipment that you need to be able to pull something like this together. And I ended up having to squish it all in there to be able to get it all into one shot. So be sure that you check with your manufacturer's guidelines and see if there are any other local codes that you need to follow. Other than that, let's check it out and see how these pieces go together. I wanted to start over here at the main panel. This is gonna be where power comes in from grid. From your main panel, you're gonna be feeding through an AC disconnect and into your store edge inverter. This is where we bring the solar power in and then it also integrates with several other pieces of equipment here. It's connected to the auto transformer. It's also connected to this. This is the meter box. It's a communication gateway that's inside of here. It allows it to track power that's being produced and power that's being used. And here, tucked between the storage inverter and the LG Chem battery is our backed up load panel. It's also called a critical load sub panel. And this is where we wanna move our circuits over from the main panel so that we have power to all of these loads if grid power goes down. We only have 5,000 watts of AC power available if the grid is down for our backed up loads. So we'll have to be kind of conscientious about what we decide to back up. We've got some examples over here. Now things that you would want to back up, television is a good one. This uses a few hundred watts. That's not that big of a deal. We'll move that circuit over to our backed up load panel. Lights, this is another good one. Want to have that, we'll keep those on when the power goes down. Let's see, hot tub, this probably isn't going to work. A hot tub's gonna pull more than 5,000 watts all by itself. Air conditioning, I know y'all really like it, I do too. You're probably not gonna be able to back that up either. We need to focus on our smaller things, a fridge. We've gotta keep our food cold. We also have things like a lamp, this is extra lighting. And then the last thing over here I would want to back up would be the computer. But keep in mind, the LG Chem batteries got a finite amount of stored power in there. Once it gets to be the end of the day, you only have the power that's stored in there until the sun comes out the next day or until the utility power comes back up. The point is, if you're running 5,000 watts worth of loads on this thing, and there's 10 kW in this battery, for the sake of discussion, you're only gonna be able to run it for about two hours. The more things you have on your critical load sub panel, the less time you're gonna be able to back it up. I like to tell people, they say, Schwa, how long is this battery gonna last me? How much power is in there? And I'll say, well, it's like asking you, you know, how long you're gonna have a gallon of water. It depends on how quickly you drink it. So you do wanna to try to back up some of your larger loads. Let's see what that might take. Typically people will wanna get in and back up their air conditioning out of all of their larger loads. And if you're using something smaller, like a five, six, 700 watt air conditioning unit, usually something less than a thousand watts, and you're only using it for a couple hours, you're only cooling off one room or a small section of your house, you might be able to make this work. But if you look over here, there's not much room in the sub panel. It's kind of full. That doesn't really fit though. We're backing up a lot of things. Keep in mind, we're not just working against the 5,000 watt limitation we have on the inverter but also about the stored power in the battery. We only have the power that's being stored in here. So if this really is a critical load and you really need to make this work for you, you may have to get in and make some sacrifices. There. Now, if you really wanna keep your air conditioner running and your fridge going, you're gonna to have to pump the brakes on some of these other things because you've only got a finite amount of stored power in here till the sun comes back out. We've looked at the overall topology of the system and how the equipment goes together, a little bit about what it can provide for us on a backup perspective, 
Now let's take a look at the inside of the inverter and the battery so we can get a good idea of the terminals and the wiring and some of the stuff we're working with there. The storage has got the terminals for your auto transformer. You've got your AC input from grid. Here's your AC output to your backed up load panel, your connection to your battery. And then back here, you've got all your connections for your solar input. I mocked this up so there's not actually a solar array feeding into it. And then you've got your communication wiring, which goes out to your gateway and also goes over to your battery. These units come with a digital display and the buttons inside where you can get in and manually program the thing, get it operating and see what it's doing from right in front of the inverter. All of the newer Solar Edge inverters use set app and they don't have a display, but we still have a handful of these models that have got the digital display, they've got the buttons and you can do everything you need to do on site without a smartphone or a tablet. Thanks for taking the time to check out our video on the Solar Edge Store Edge Inverter and the LG Chem Battery. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to us online or give us a call anytime. This is Josh Rice. Have a great day.